do a double duty on praying today. I invite you to pray according to your faith as I pray according to mine. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, thank you for the many blessings that surround us every day, for the freedom to gather as Rotarians, for the food that is here, for a hug from an old friend, for the laughter of a child, the simple things that we often take for granted. Help us remember that when life gets so stressful and that when the storms rage around us, help us be still and know that you are God and that you are with us wherever we go. Go with us now and prepare us for service in your name. Amen. Thank you, Audrey. That was beautiful. Thanks very much. And now for our materials and guests, Todd and Jeff Go. Good afternoon. We have no visiting Rotarians today. If any guests in there, remember with them, will please stand and introduce yourself. Any guests? Well, welcome everybody. Thank you. Thank you, John. And now, health and happiness, the incomparable, the incomparable Rex Wilson. had a phone attached to a wall. <laughs> when it rang, I picked it up without even knowing who was calling. Isn't it amazing that I'm still alive? <laughs> Do you remember when you could when you could call someone dozens of times and hang up and they never knew it was you? <laughs> Some fun times. <laughs> I still have a landline, but my bride calls it the cell phone finder. <laughs> when a young person tells me about their problems, I like to tell them the story about the time I survived without a cell phone or the internet for 35 years. <laughs> It might have been a few more than that. I know everybody here was in kindergarten recently and remembers show and tell. Teacher said, bring something that represents your religion. Well, the first student, he got up and he said, my name is Benjamin and I'm Jewish and this is a star of David. The second student got up and said, my name is Mary, I'm a Roman Catholic, and this is a rosary. The third student got up and he said, my name is Tommy, I'm a United Methodist, and this is a casserole. Sometimes I use Lutherans, but uh, this seemed a better crowd for United Methodists. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but when attorneys ask questions in court, it's recorded. And they are saved word for word. I'd just like to share a few with you. The attorney asked, what was the first thing your husband said to you that morning? The witness said, where am I, Kathy? And why did that upset you? Well, my name is Susan. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> I'd like to know what gear you were at the moment of impact. Uh, Gucci sweats and Reeboks. Uh, <laughs> what is your date of birth? July 18th. What year? Well, every year. 
Yeah, not good either. <laughs> Throw that whole page away. <laughs> the attorney asked, were you present when your picture was taken? <laughs> you kidding me? She had three children, right? Yes. How many boys? None. Were there any girls? Your Honor, I need another attorney. <laughs> I'd like to know how your first marriage was terminated by death. And by whose death was it terminated? <laughs> Take a guess. Doctor, how many of your autopsies have you performed on dead people? All of them. The live ones put up too much of a fight. That one was good. Do you recall the time you examined the body? The autopsy started at around 8.30 p.m. And Mr. Denton was dead at the time? Well, if not, he was by the time I finished. You're warming up now. That's good. That's good. Was I not? Well, you couldn't hear me before, could you? That's the problem. I'll be louder. <laughs> Doctor, before you conducted the auto autopsy, did you check for a pulse? No. Did you check for blood pressure? No. Did you check for breathing? No. So then is it possible that the patient was alive when you began the autopsy? No. How can you be so sure, doctor? Because his brain was sitting on my desk in a jar. I see, but could the patient have still been alive nevertheless? Yes, it is possible. He could have been alive and practicing law. <laughs> Good taste now. The Latin say non gustibus est disputatum. About taste, there can be no dispute. A young couple, when I was a pastor down in the Orangeburg district, I had three churches out in the country. And a young couple invited me to Sunday dinner. And while the couple were in the kitchen making the final preparations, I was left with their son, little Johnny. So I asked Johnny, what they what are they having for dinner? Goat. Goat? Are you sure about that? Yes, sir. Johnny said, I heard Daddy say to Mama, today is just as good a day as any to have the old goat to dinner. <laughs> one of your cart bucket on your table and what other announcement you're we have the sign-up sheets for your committee on the tables those of you who did not fill it out last week please do so this week we're going to tabulate and assign everyone uh, later this week so I'd like to have your input and I want to thank those that did fill it out it was um, a very emotional thing to look at, see all the responses from last week. So I thank you. Um, I think we'll be a much better, stronger club if we're all involved. So I appreciate your help. We have finalized the dates. And I want you to mark your calendars for a club social uh, at the Lace House on December 16th. Uh, hoping that Governor McMaster will be able to come maybe even invite us over to the governor's mansion, but we'll see. I'm not promising that. <laughs> Rotary night at the Fireflies this Friday night. If you haven't got your ticket, please see Blake so you can have it and be there with the rest of us. And now, Carrie Powers. Thank you, President Louisa. Hello, everyone. It's glad to be back here with you guys. Um, I called Louisa last week and asked her if she'd give me just a few minutes on the agenda today. Um, you'll see on your tables this 
uh, piece of paper about LeaderCast. And for those of you who were in the club in 2015, which is most of you, um, you know, we, our club, put LeaderCast on, um, I think it was called the Brave Ones at the time. And uh, we did it at the Darla Moore School of Business. And so this year, um, at the Irmo Chamber, instead of doing an auction, because I just couldn't stand to do another auction. Um, so instead of doing an auction, we are doing LeaderCast. And this year it is called Leading Healthy Teams. And um, our partners over at Midlands Technical College, um, the Harbison Theater at Midlands Tech, have um, donated the building to us. If y'all haven't been to that building, it is absolutely beautiful. It seats 400 people. And um, they've partnered with us on this event. We will have Carabas as our lunch. So you get a box lunch from Carabas that day. Uh, but it's September 12th. It's Thursday, September 12th. And um, it's from 9 in the morning till 3.30 in the afternoon. We have nine speakers. And then we'll also have some folks um, locally that will be filling in the gaps in between um, the big speakers. But the headliner this year is Gail King. And for those of you who um, are familiar with Oprah, she is um, one of Oprah's protégés and I think her bestie. Um, and then also Andy Stanley will be there this year. And uh, you can read the whole list um, on the sheet that's on your table. So tickets are on sale now. Um, we've got, um, I think, about 200 tickets left. And they're $125. You can um, see me. You can see Kim Mitchell. You can see Cynthia over here. And um, we can help you with that. Or if you just want to purchase your tickets online, you can go to funchamber.com and, um, and get them there. So I hope to see lots of faces there from Rotary. I know a lot of you guys are Irmo Chamber members. but. Um, you also get continuing education credits with this as well for um, human resources and nursing and then they also have general CEUs uh, for this as well. So um, I hope to see the support of the club and um, thanks for letting me come up here and talk. I appreciate it. Thank you, Carrie. And now Cynthia Giles wants to have an announcement, make an announcement about the Rotary Initiative on Literacy. Children's experiences during their first five years are more consequential than we ever thought. We know that the brain develops the most in the first five years of life. By age six, 95% of the child's brain is already developed by age six. So these early years are very, very important. And of all people, not just parents, pediatricians, and teachers, but economists are paying attention. Neurosynaptic connections are occurring in a child's brain at age zero to three at a rate of 700 a second. The worst fallacy in this business is to assume that the ability, the motivations, the skills of people are fixed at birth. They are not. What happens in that 36 month period is important as far as whether a child is going to be trusting and curious and active and able to interact with other people in a productive way. What I came to understand was that ability was multiple in nature, but you could actually start, even at the earliest years, and increase the possibilities of individuals for their life. So that became very exciting to me. Here are my firms are in Minneapolis. My expertise is pre-Civil War banking. Uh, I worried a lot about business cycles and financial crises and unemployment and inflation. Not as somebody with that background, I know that's all. Get involved with early childhood, prenatal design. You have to figure out what's the best investment. It's going to be early childhood education, making sure these kids start healthy and ready to learn. Science has demonstrated that a child's earliest experiences are vital to building the foundation for lifelong individual success in school and in life. We can put dollar values on almost anything. Economists are adding new data to this argument, studying two initiatives in particular, high quality early care and preschool, calculating how much they cost and how much they pay off to our economy. And they're worried. 
Not because we're spending too much, but because we're spending too little where it matters most. early care and preschool and that isn't a concern for economists as well as Rotarians alike and for that reason we have partnered with Save the Children. Together We Read is a movement that believes in the power of reading aloud or sharing books with children from infancy. Helping build the language skills and the love for reading that is necessary for children to be prepared for school and for life. This movement with Save the Children encourages us to spread awareness set up activities, become advocates, and help fundraise in our community so we can help provide high quality early care to the children here in Columbia. This is not a worldwide thing. We will be helping children here. Um, but I need your help. I have a few people that have volunteered to be on a committee with me, and I need more people to be on this committee. But there's other ways that you guys can help this committee as well. By donating books or office, space if you have an office that has children and families entering in donating some space for us to put books up as well as some education so that way those parents can go home and read to their children as well as have have the resources they need to know how to read to children um, the other thing is starting the end of august which is right in time for back to school we will be doing a social media campaign so if you guys can please take to your facebook and your twitter and share what we do uh, you guys are all leaders in your community and that's why we're looking for uh, your participation in this. Um, hopefully, with just a little bit of encouragement from all of you, we can actually make a big impression on the future generations and hopefully have some good Rotarians out of it in the future years to come. Thank you. And now, introducing our speaker is Cynthia Giles. Our speaker, who needs no speaker, I mean, he needs no introduction because he's a member of our club, or at one time was, and we're trying to get him back. Uh, Gary. Hello again. Hello. <laughs> what are you are doing? Are you guys doing okay? I know it's a fun meeting, right? So, um, Eric Davis is our speaker today, and he is our assistant district governor of Area 2 which hopefully he can explain that because I still don't completely understand what that means. Um, <laughs> um, he was born and raised in Cincinnati, Ohio, but if you have a conversation with him, you will think that he was from here. He has true Southern hospitality and he has been very gracious and welcoming to me, um, personally helping me on the district level of being a Rotarian as well as just personally within my work. He professionally is a programmer and a system analysis and probably knows more about computers than I do. Yes, someone does know more about computers than we do. Um, uh, he, is the, he owns his own business called Future Tech Enterprises, right? Okay, Future Tech Enterprises, um, and he specializes in consulting. He's been a Rotarian since Oh my goodness. Of oh, 2001. He's been a Rotarian since 2001 and he became assistant governor for the area in 2018. So without further ado, please welcome Eric Davis. Thank you so much for having me today. It's always great to be back here and seeing all my old friends. Uh, just for the uh, record, uh, it was uh, Rusty DePass who brought me into Rotary in 2001. Thank you, Rusty. I'm here today to uh, uh, kind of kick off the Rotary year for you. I'm going to try to move this microphone so it's not so much in my face. Maybe I could just do this. This is my All right. There we go. So. Our Rotary International President, uh, Mark Maloney, is a member of the Decatur, Alabama Rotary Club, and he has a particular vision of Rotary. His vision is, together we see a world where people unite 
and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. So how do we implement this vision? He suggests that we need to grow Rotary while at the same time adapting Rotary to new generations. We need to increase member engagement through alternative meeting experiences, you know, maybe a meeting where Rusty plays the bongos instead of the piano. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe meetings at uh, different times or different days of the week. Maybe uh, uh, an evening meeting or a social. I heard, I heard you mention a social is coming up, right? That's great that you're doing that. Uh, perhaps a small service project one week instead of a traditional meeting. You guys do that too? To have a service project instead of a meeting? Good. That's wonderful. He also says we ought to welcome families, including children, into Rotary. Try to make Rotary family friendly. So consider uh, structuring some of your service projects or some of your socials where children can come. How will we work together to unite people in Rotary Fellowship? Well, at the club level, it looks, sounds like you guys are already doing some great things. Um, I, I'm glad to see that uh, you've passed out a sheet so people can sign up for committees. Everybody should have a role to play in the club. Nobody should sit back and just have lunch every week. Everybody should be involved in doing something with the club. And in this club in particular, you're large enough where you could potentially grow your club by forming a satellite club. This club is so large, you could probably have a satellite club every day of the week. But I think at least you could uh, consider forming one satellite club. There's a group of people in your membership that uh, perhaps uh, can't uh, make a lunch meeting on Monday very often. Uh, consider forming a satellite club where you have a meeting a different day of the week or a different time. Great way to grow your club. At the area level, we have this year formed two committees, a Rotary Experience Committee and a Rotary Social Media Committee. These committees together will focus on engaging our current members while at the same time adapting Rotary to appeal to young professionals whose lives move at the speed of light. It might mean providing network opportunities, whether in person or virtual, you know, we've kind of got away from that in recent years in Rotary. When I joined in 2001, uh, you know, this club did a, uh, a Rotary classification talk or had a few minutes of networking every week. It was great. Um, most clubs have gotten away from that in recent years, and I'd really love to see my clubs uh, get back to that. By the way, uh, I should mention, I guess, who my clubs are, since uh, Cynthia said she wanted me to explain the area governor position means that I support six clubs in Area 2. Your club, uh, Columbia Capital, Columbia East, Five Points, Main Street, and my club, Vista 9. Uh, all six of those clubs uh, are the ones that I uh, have responsibility for helping out. So in addition to different meeting experiences, socials, uh, different uh, you know, meetings at different times, we also need to learn to communicate with the younger generations, and you know, this is not just Cynthia's generation, but the, the generation or two behind her that are coming up. We need to learn to communicate with them in the ways that they prefer, using the tools that they prefer, which are different from the tools that we use. At the district level, our district governor, Johnny Moore, and his officers are committed to helping you in any way you ask to grow the membership of this club. He's all about membership this year. The effort starts with a club membership committee and uh, District Governor Johnny has asked every club to form a membership committee that has at least five people on it. Do you have your five people yet, Louisa? All right, good. So you're ahead of the game. So what does area two plan to do to take action to create lasting change. Well, we have five projects on the agenda. First one is a Discover Rotary Day. We want to invite the public to learn about what Rotary does. All six clubs and USC Rotary Act will be represented at, at this event. Uh, and it has the goal of raising our profile in the community, telling the public about what we do, while at the same time attracting some new members. 
Which brings me to the USC Rotor Act Club. USC Rotor Act is now an Area 2 responsibility, and each club has been asked to appoint a liaison who will maintain contact with the Rotor Act Club and invite Rotor Actors to your club meetings and your service projects. Uh, and also, uh, hopefully, uh, get some of you to go to uh, some of the Rotor Act meetings as well. Uh, Nina Beal with the Columbia Capital Club is heading up this effort. She'll coordinate with all the clubs on this. A new program we have this year uh, is an Early Act Club. Are you all familiar with what Early Act is? Okay, let me explain very quickly. In Rotary, there's four types of clubs. There's a regular Rotary Club like this. There's a Rotaract Club, which is a college level. There's Interact Club, which is middle school and high school level. And then there's Early Act Club at the elementary school level, okay? So this year, we're gonna form an Early Act Club. Uh, St. Peter's Catholic School approached me uh, with a request to form a club at their school. Um, so uh, uh, I've invited all of my six clubs to participate in this. Uh, Matt Morrison with Main Street Rotary is gonna head up uh, this effort. Um, so, uh, uh, if you are interested in working with uh, uh, elementary school children on service projects and things like that, uh, please uh, make sure you contact Matt Morrison or myself. Also, uh, the next, uh, another project that we're doing is the uh, Save the Children project, which um, I uh, just saw a presentation about. I'm glad you're getting started on that. All six of my clubs have agreed to participate in this program. Um, uh, in this program, there are three activities that you need to do to complete the program. The first is a Bridge the Gap Early Education Walk, a fundraiser that we'll be doing as an area. All six clubs will be working together on this. The Experience Committee will be coordinating that. And then there are two other activities that you can choose from. Uh, most clubs, and I, I'm certain that this one, uh, this club also uh, does a yearly project in literacy. Most clubs do. Those projects count. And then uh, you get to choose a third activity. You can work together with other clubs or you can do it yourselves, whatever you prefer to do. The last program we have on the area level is a fundraiser for an organization called Key Changes Therapy. Have you all ever heard of that organization? Uh, what's special about them, and, and Natalie would be glad to come do a presentation your club to, to tell you more about what they do, but um, to give you the nutshell version, um, they are one of the very few organizations in the entire country that provide what is called music therapy for children. Most of the population they serve uh, are, are children from low-income families, and these are children with behavioral issues, uh, 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 children, say, on the autism spectrum or other types of behavioral issues. Uh, these children don't respond to, uh, uh, to regular types of therapy but they do respond to this music therapy. Uh, some of them, have, after having this therapy, have said their first words to their parents. It's, it's really a miracle how it works. And, and we have an organization right here in Columbia that does that. They are a nonprofit, and because uh, most of the population they serve are low-income families, they can't pay out of pocket. So uh, they uh, uh, seek donations, to in, order, in order to keep these kids in, in uh, the therapy program. I've asked all the Area 2 clubs to consider participating in a fundraiser for this organization. Uh, I, I ask you to seriously consider uh, supporting this worthy cause, and uh, uh, Louisa uh, should be able to get back to me hopefully pretty soon uh, with your club's decision on whether or not you'd like to participate. Uh, so far, I have several clubs participating, and I hope eventually that uh, all of them will come, uh, uh, come and participate. Lastly, at the district level, we have some projects, too. Uh, of course, you all know about the CART Fund. This club is very diligent in, uh, in providing uh, your change for CART. Uh, but this year, we uh, want to kick it up a notch. Uh, each club has been asked to uh, provide a uh, person as a CART liaison. In this club, it's uh, Frank Brown and uh, Melinda Makowski back there at that table I see. They're sitting in the very back so they can't be noticed. Hopefully, they'll sit up front in the future so they can uh, more easily uh, promote CART and uh, hopefully 
uh, increase uh, this club's contributions to CART. Do you all know that there is an annual meeting for the CART program? Did you all know that already? There's an annual meeting that happens right here in Columbia every May. And uh, it's a fascinating meeting to go to. It's free to go to. Um, uh, if you have a chance, I'd sign up to go. Uh, if you do go, uh, one of the great things about it is you get to hear directly from the researchers that CARP funds. You get to hear directly from them about their research and their progress. Very fascinating. As you all know, uh, CART is very personal to me. My grandmother died in my arms of Alzheimer's. She didn't know who I was. She didn't know where she was. And she died because she simply forgot how to breathe. And I can still to this day, even though it happened uh, decades ago, I can still to this day see the look of fear and confusion on her face. And I could tell what she's thinking. You know, what's happening to me? Where am I? Who's this goober that's holding me in his arms? What's he doing here? All of that. You never want to see a look like that in somebody's face. I never want to see it again. Uh, I'm sure everybody in here knows somebody who has had Alzheimer's, or maybe uh, someone, uh, a friend or, or um, relative who knows somebody with Alzheimer's. It's a very pervasive disease. But our researchers are making a lot of progress on it. And I would encourage you uh, to consider giving more to CART. Last year, this past May, not last year, but last Rotary year, this past May, uh, CART gave, for the first time, $1 million in research grants. So we're hoping to give more than that this year. So uh, consider uh, 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 giving Frank and Melinda more of your change this year. Next we have a program, uh, or a, uh, an event rather, called World Polio Day. Um, it's happening October 24th at Segra Park, right here in our backyard. Um, and our Area 2 clubs will have a big role to play in this event. Uh, of course, uh, Cynthia is on that planning committee, um, and they, they managed to pull me into that planning committee as well. Uh, and we're going to need lots of uh, volunteers to pull this off. Uh, so mark that on your calendar. Get ready for that. It's going to be a great time. Games and beer. At least in the Vista Night Rotary Club, we don't think you can get any better than that. Games and beer. Lastly, uh, we have on the district level the uh, Rise Against Hunger One Million Meal Challenge. Um, the district as a whole, the goal is to have the district as a whole pack one million meals for hungry people around the world. And this is a great event to uh, have the whole family do. It's very easy to pack these meals. Uh, we did a meal packing event at the last district conference. If you were there, you probably uh, uh, know what I'm talking about. Uh, but we had lots of kids there, uh, lots of teenagers there, as well as uh, Rotarians, and uh, uh, we all packed a bunch of meals uh, for uh, hungry people. It was a great event. Uh, it's fun to do, and uh, um, our uh, experience committee will be working with past District Governor David Terrard to plan the events for our area. Where you are a tough crowd, nobody out there is smiling or anything. Come on, this is Rotary Club. All right, all right, I'll finish up so you can get back to smiling. So let's work together as an area to gather more people under the Rotary banner, to make all the area and district programs a success, and in so doing, not only change the world and change our community, but also create lasting change in ourselves. Thank you very much for having me today. Thank you, Mary. And we really are smiling inside. But I'm thinking also how much work we have to do that you told us about. So maybe that's the reason for some hesitation. But we'll get to work, I promise. And thank you. This little token of appreciation. Thank you. And we'd still love to have you back in our club anytime. Thank you. All right. Um, next week, Mason, where are you? Speaker.
Next week we have South Carolina Historic Aviation speaking to us. We had a speaker here this summer that talked about the B-52 uh, bomber that came out of Lake Greenwood. This is the group that's associated with that. And then we'll be talking more about that project. We have 20 minutes left. You all want to leave early? Or does anybody have something they would like to talk about, announce? Any questions for our is there any uh, more discussion for what Frederick in there to pick up the park fund? Repeat that? Yeah. The park fund, would it be picked up anywhere for the U.S.? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, park is. Uh, uh, I will approach the podium. <laughs> Uh, CART is actually, um, it, it's a, not a national program yet, but it is gaining lots of ground. Um, uh, all the districts along the uh, East Coast uh, participate, including the Caribbean. And uh, there are some districts out West in California and Texas that are also participating. Um, so uh, every year, more and more districts come on, to, uh, come on board with the program. It's growing and growing and growing. Are there any other questions? And we are meeting after this meeting uh, with the CART Fund uh, group to plan, um, oh, I say another, a meeting with uh, researchers. And so we'll update you as well on that probably sometime this fall. Uh, we'll let you know. All right, are there any other questions? If not, let's close in song. <laughs>